Okay, so uh, let's uh, do this question. Uh, I wanted to do it because it's uh, one of those questions that's uh, specifically written in a way where you have to do calculus. So unlike that other question with the spring above, um, here you won't find the formula in the textbook. You just have to do it. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so we are given a, a functional form for the force in terms of x displacement uh, from zero distance the coordinate stretched. Yeah. That, and they have given us the values of the constant that occurs in the functional form for the um, uh, for the uh, force, and they are asking about how much work must be done on the cord to stretch it by this amount. So the main challenge here comes down to this. So when this cord is at the displacement of zero, the amount of force that the cord exerts is zero and as you stretch it so eventually you're going to stretch it all the way to your final delta x or i guess uh, let me not use too many unnecessary um, letters uh, to the final x position of x final and you will have some value of force at that x final the challenge here is that you can't simply say work done is uh, force times the displacement. Because if you say that, you won't have the right value of the force to plug in. Do you plug in the value at the start? Do you plug in the value at the end? Do you plug in the value at the midpoint? Sometimes that one works, but here it won't. I, I think it won't. Um, so this is the kind of situation where uh, you have to imagine breaking it up and doing it uh, with a little step at a time. And uh, this is the exact approach you saw when we were driving the, uh, the formula for the spring potential energy and told us to do it for this specific situation. And that's really the reason you should learn how to do this for the situations where there's no formula and you have to drive it yourself. So what I'm imagining is this. Imagine taking this displacement and breaking it up into tiny little portions. And in this expression I'm going to write down, I'm just going to try to deal with a very small amount of displacement. So small, I'm going to call it dx. That's my infinitesimal uh, displacement. And I can write down an expression for the infinitesimal amount of work being done over that infinitesimal displacement. That's going to be the force at its position x times the infinitesimal displacement. And, and, um, and, this, and here, I know exactly what value of force to use. Uh, it's the value of force at this point. And uh, you know, before calculus, there would have been some interval. So I would have been approximating, you know, it, it, which point within that interval do you take the force? The magic of calculus is that in the limit, this dx goes to zero and the number of intervals goes to infinity, that what used to be approximate result becomes exact. That's the calculus <laughs> that you've learned in method three. So um, we get the total amount of work done over the entire interval from x equals zero to x final by integrating from x equals zero to x final. So this is going to be our formula for us to calculate. Let me write out the explicit form. So the x is going from zero, because that's where we are studying, to x final that we have a value of. And the expression for force comes from here. Kx1 plus k, oops, k1 <laughs> times x, not x1, uh, and k2 times the same x to the third power times dx. And imagine you are given this question in your math 3a class. Uh, I don't think this is a difficult question. It's a polynomial integral. A lot of you will have formula memorized. And if you are just given this integral to do, it would be super easy. I can even do it while I'm talking and distracting myself, uh, I think. So, you know, in terms of the math portion goes, it's not a difficult question. Usually the place where people get stuck is not the math, math is easy. It's uh, this part of setting it up. 
and for the part where you are setting it up, what I encourage you to do is imagine going through this step, breaking up your large interval that you can't quite handle into tiny infinitesimal interval that you can handle. Write down an expression for that infinitesimal interval, and then imagine doing the rest of the integral math steps. So, so yeah, I have done the integral, hopefully correctly. And when I plug in the number, it should be, and you know, zero will just give me zero. So it's gonna be one half K one X final squared plus one fourth K two X to X final to the fourth power. So yeah, just calculate it and they should give me the right answer. So uh, let me, yeah, let me, <laughs> Sorry, I should have brought up sage math earlier. When the expression gets complicated, I hate doing it on a calculator. Like if you make a tiny bit of mistake, it's hard to undo, edit. So let me just do this on sage math properly so that I can uh, type this out. Um, and in fact, with the sage math, I can uh, use make use of this uh, substitution syntax that makes number plugging in much more uh, enjoyable, especially in circumstances where you have uh, same symbol occurring in multiple places. Uh, it really cuts down on different possibilities for mistake. Okay, let me define my variables that I'm gonna use. Oops, um, K2x final. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down an expression for this. Uh, one half times k1 times x final squared plus one fourth. I'm putting that dot to force a decimal approximation. K2 times, I, I don't think it's necessary, but just in case. Okay, so that's my symbolic expression that I have there. And I can substitute in the values I have. K1, I'm given that as 210 in basic SI units. K2, I'm given that as minus 0 0.223 in basic SI units. And X final, I'm given that as 16.7 in basic SI units. So when I do that, I get that answer. Now that's in joules, basic SI units. So I have to take that and divide by 1,000 to get actually what they're asking for, 24.9 kilojoules. So yeah, it, it's a calculus question, and you know I I won't ask you too many of these because uh, it's one of those things that people do struggle with, and I don't know if it's the most important thing in the class. But um, I I do encourage people, especially if you are going into engineering, you know, learn how to do this so that in the situations when you don't have a formula, you have ability to derive your own formula. <laughs>